Manna for Modern Man welcomes you to the services of Calvary Temple Worship Center in Fort Wayne, Indiana, where Dr. Paul E. Pano is pastor. The sermon you are about to hear was prepared live as part of the regular services at the Worship Center. If you have questions or desire a catalog of other tapes available, you may write Manna for Modern Man, P.O. Box 11247, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46856. We encourage you to use your Bible and take notes as you listen carefully to the Word of God as it is presented. If you did, will you get them out? Now let's hold them up real high. Beautiful. And we always wave them, don't we? You folks in the television audience, you get your Bibles too. If you're sitting there by yourself, go ahead and wave it. Let me invite you to turn to John's Gospel, chapter 9. In the 41 verses of this chapter is a beautiful, beautiful story of Jesus healing the man that was born blind. Follow with me, and let's begin reading with verse 1, and, and we'll read enough from the Scripture so that all of us can, can be brought up to date and our minds can be refreshed on what happened. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from his birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, made clay of the spittle, and anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing the neighbors, therefore, and they who before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said, A man who is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that was formerly blind. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again the Pharisees asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles. And there was a division among them. Jesus healed the man that was born blind. If you have a pencil, and most of us are in the habit of marking our Bibles, let me suggest that you take your pencil and draw a line under that powerful statement that Jesus made when he said, I am the light of the world. In the Gospel of John, there are some interesting statements that Jesus makes over and over again. The little word, uh, the, these two little words, I am, 
are repeated several times in the Gospel of John. If you want to take a moment and just flip back to the sixth chapter, you'll see in verse 35, and, and he repeats it in the same chapter, verse 48, and again in verse 51. He said, I am the bread. If you're hungry, I am the bread. In verse 12 of the eighth chapter, and we'll come back to that, he says the same thing in that verse that he says in the ninth chapter. He said, I am the light, and we'll, we'll come back to that again. In the 10th chapter, and look at verse 7, I referred to it last week. Jesus said, I am the door to the sheepfold. If you're going to get in and be one of my sheep, you must come through the door. I am the door. In that same chapter, verses 11 and 14, he repeats, I am the the good shepherd. In the 11th chapter, in verse 25, it's repeated more than one time. I am the resurrection, the true vine. I want you to notice the powerful difference there is between Christianity and the religions of the world. Because the religions of the world introduce us to creeds they introduce us to a culture, to, to, to rules, and regulations, and guidelines. They introduce us to concepts and philosophies. But Christianity is different because those of us that are Christian are introduced to the person. There's a difference between a creed and the Christ. There are a lot of people that have a religious system that don't know the Savior. And this was what was so confusing and so frustrating and so tormenting to the religious leaders of the day who had volumes of books written on their ceremonies and their laws and their ritual and their do's and their do-nots and all that was involved in their religious exercise. And here comes a man, the man, on the scene. And in one little statement, he simply wipes out the whole concept of their religious exercises. And he says, if you want to go to God, you're not going to get to God through all of that ceremony and ritual and through all of your laws and regulations. He said, I am the way. He said, if you're going to find life, you're not going to find life because of, of your manner of living. He said, if you're going to find life, I am the resurrection and I am the life. It's a matter of a relationship and an identity with Jesus Christ. You see, it was, it was here that Jesus really irritated those religious people because not only did he say, I am bread, I am life, I am light, but he was identifying with deity. He was proclaiming that he was more than Jesus Christ, the Son of Man. He was saying... I am Jesus Christ, very God, God living among you. And this irritated and frustrated those religious people. They said, you are a blasphemer. As long as he was a teacher and a prophet, they had no fuss with him. As long as he was a good man and a rabbi, they could put up with him. They could endure him. But when he said, I am, for they knew what God had said to Moses when Moses said, God, who, by what authority am I going to go before Pharaoh? And God said, you tell Pharaoh, I am that I am, hath sent thee. 
And they knew that God had revealed himself to Moses, the divine, eternal God as I am. And here was this Galilean, this, this man from Nazareth, this man of humble and lowly birth, standing and saying, I am identifying with deity. Let me just show you how angry they really became. Look back now in the 8th chapter, yes, the 8th chapter of, of God, John's gospel and look at verse 12. Then spoke Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Then listen. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest witness of thyself. Thy witness is not true. We refuse to accept it. And let me tell you just how angry they really got. Look in verse 58 of that same chapter. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. And they could not take that. Then took they up stones to cast at him. They were ready and started to stone Jesus to death. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple going through the midst of them and so passed by. Now that's what happened. And the religious leaders said, you can say what you want, but when you identify with deity, when you are brazen enough to say that before Abraham was, you existed, when you put yourself in the position of being the eternal God, then we'll have nothing to do with you. And they picked up stones to cast at him. And because it was not his time, he slipped through the crowd, lost himself in the temple, and passed by. You say, Pastor Pano, what has that got to do with us? Everything in the world. Because the religious systems of the world today are willing, and the humanists of the world today will not deny the existence of Jesus Christ. They're wiser than that. They would be worse than fools to deny that Jesus Christ lived among us. There are too many evidences and too many historical facts to point with infallible proof that Jesus Christ walked among men, lived among men, died on a cross and was buried. That's not the fuss. The religious leaders today, they are they are perfectly happy if we can catalog Jesus as a great teacher and a great prophet, and they want to lump him in with other great religious leaders of the day. But you see, Jesus drew a line, and he did indeed bear witness to himself. He said, before Abraham was, I am. He said, I am God, and no man's going to get to the Father except through me. That the world system doesn't want to accept. Let me tell you today, there are too many in the church system flying under the banner of Christianity that don't want to accept it. They want to deny the miraculous and the supernatural. Don't try to hang on us this deity business. Don't try to tell us that Jesus is the only way. There are many ways. That's what they want us to believe. But let's listen to the words of the Master. For either he is a truth, he is the truth, or he is the greatest deceiver that ever walked. His testimony is simply this. I am the light of the world. And the Pharisees couldn't take it and they wanted to eliminate him. Listen. The only way you can be a Christian, you can't be a Christian by going to a Christian church. You can't be a Christian by, by singing Christian songs. You can't be a Christian by going through all of the Christian exercises that we might find in Christian churches. 
There's only one way to be a Christian, and that's to identify with Jesus Christ as very man and very God. He is the truth. He is the way. He is the light. He is the bread. He is the shepherd. He is the way, and there is no other. That's what he declared. That's what being a Christian is. A Christian is not a compromising religious somebody. A Christian is someone that says, I know whom, not what, I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Now get the picture. He's had this encounter with the Pharisees. They have picked up stones and are going to stone him and they've got a religious reason for doing it. He has blasphemed. So they have said, blasphemer, the law tells us to stone you and we will stone you. And he slipped by. And as he went by, forget that there's a chapter heading because the the, the story goes right on. Look in verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a blind man. Now, have you got an imagination? Have you got the picture? He's just had this encounter with these Pharisees. They have ridiculed him. They, they are so angry that all they want to do is destroy him. All they want to do is to blot out what he stands for. If you'll just be a nice teacher and a social reformer and a religious leader, that's fine. But when you say you're God, that's more than we can take. And that's exactly where we are in the world today. They want the church to preach a nice little social gospel, but don't declare that Jesus Christ is very man and very God. Don't declare to us that he was born of a virgin. Don't preach to us that he was nailed to a cross and put in a sepulcher and raised from the dead and went back to heaven. Don't ask us to believe he's coming back again. This business of making Jesus God, that's too much. Let me pause here. So there's no question about it. That's where we stand. (laughs) That's what we're ready to live for. And that's what we're ready to die for. We know whom we have believed. Now, with all of that, he slips through the crowd and starts out of the temple and runs head on into a blind man. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'd have just had the encounter in the temple compound that Jesus had, I would have been hitting for the wilderness. Get me someplace where it's safe. Man, they are after my hide. They have threatened me. They are about to take away my civil rights. But let me tell you, Jesus forgot all about his enemies and his accusers. He completely ignored them, and he continued two things. Listen to this. He did not let that pressure stop his ministry, and he did not let the pressure stop his message. He created all this by saying, I am the light. Now he sees a blind man that's in darkness and he says, I've got a chance to say it one more time. Oh, I don't know about you, but I'm getting excited about this. And he stops the blind at the blind man. And he stops because he is moved with compassion. This is the purpose of his ministry. It's to touch those that need to be touched. It's to help those that need to be helped. It's to minister to those that are bound and are blind and are hurting. 
He didn't let the pressure stop him from his ministry. There are all too many of us. The first time there's the least little bit of difficulty that comes into our lives, we're all ready to give up our ministry. Got a little opposition. Got a little problem. Got a little difficulty. So, Lord, I'm going to lay down and die. Oh, I'm glad that isn't the example the Lord left us right in the middle of the battle with the enemy breathing down his neck and with the Pharisees with their hands filled with stones. He stops and he doesn't forget his call. He doesn't forget why he's here. He doesn't forget his ministry. He goes to a man that's blind and has been blind from birth. While his enemy breathes down his neck, he says to the blind man, I am the light of the world. I'm your answer. You see, the religious system didn't have an answer for a blind man. Oh, no. He could keep all the law that he wanted to keep. It wouldn't help his blindness. His blindness had to be healed by the man, not by the system. Had to be healed by the man, not by the doctrine. Had to be healed by the man, Jesus not by what the world had to offer. Jesus said, I've got something to give you that nobody else has. Sir, I am the light of the world. You're in darkness, but you're about to see the light. He didn't forget his ministry. And he didn't forget his message. I love it. Because sometimes... There are those that say, why don't you compromise your message? There's no need to be so dogmatic. There's no reason for you to be so positive. Jesus said in the hearing of the Pharisees, I am the light. And they started to stone him. And he walked right out and ran into a blind man. And he's got the same message. What is happening didn't change his message. He said, I don't care what they do or what they think or what they say. Sir, I am the light of the world. I'll tell you, that's a, that's a lesson to us. Not to let our circumstances and not let our enemies and not let the pressure that's on the outside rob us of our ministry or strip us of our message. God help us to be faithful to what we know is the truth and stand on it and let God take care of it. Oh. Jesus said to this man, that was blind. He said, here, and this will shock you. Oh, you took I love it because there's nothing orthodox or fundamental about it. There's no tradition for spitting on the ground and taking your finger and mixing it up like it's a little mud cake. Oh, we can make it as nice as we want, but it was spit and dust. It was nasty. It was not orthodox. It wasn't dignified. <laughs> but he mixed it up. He anointed his eyes with mud, stuck them in his eye sockets, and said to that blind fella, Go to the pool of Siloam, which by interpretation is meant scent. Go there and wash, and you'll see that I'm the light. Now, I want you to notice something. He had never seen Jesus. He was blind. He had never seen Jesus. All he heard was his word. That's faith. Doing what the master says. I have never seen the master either. These eyes of mine have ever, never looked upon the Christ. I have never seen him. 
These fingers have never touched him. But I can identify with that blind man. <laughs> I have heard his voice. I know enough about the skeptics to know what happened as the blind man went from the temple to the pool because I've been to the pool and I've been to the temple and I know how many feet he had to walk, how many yards he had to go to get there. I know how many people in that crowd he had to pass to get there. And I know people well enough to know when they saw the blind man with his cane or whatever making his way to the pool. Something different about him because this time mud stuck on his face. I know people well enough to know to say, hey, blind man, what's this? Shh. A man told me if I'd go wash in the pool, I'd see, and I can listen to them. Say, oh, you've got to be the funniest man in the world. It'll never happen. And the blind man says, I've tried everything else. I don't have anything to lose. I'm going on anyway. You see, that was faith. For he obeyed when he had never seen. Listen, listen. That's all God expects of us now is to hear his word. He is not dumb. He still speaks. And all he's waiting for us to do is to obey him. The reason we don't see the miracle is because we don't obey him. And listen to me today. There are some of you that God has spoken to and you know exactly what you're to do and you've compromised what God said. And now you're seeing no miracle in your life. Some of you that are so upset because there's a bit of emotion in the house of the Lord. You say, oh, I would go to Calvary Temple, but they're so emotional. There's some of you watching on TV. You would love to come and be blessed the way we are, but you're afraid someone's going to think you went to that emotional church. I know the blind man most probably knelt down put some water on his face and opened his eyes and looked and said, Golly gee. Oh, what about this? I know enough about human nature to know. I have watched on television when family, what is that thing? Family feud. And they win $10,000. They don't care that there are 10 million people watching them jump. I want, I want, I want, I want. Well, hallelujah, you won $10,000. But for Jesus' sake, don't get on our case because we say hallelujah because Jesus saved us. Jesus, and I've got to close with this, Jesus did not let circumstances frustrate God's purposes in his life. He touched and ministered to a man that needed sight. He stayed faithful to his message, and he didn't let the frustration of the circumstances that he was in sidetrack him or discourage him or detour him. He stayed on fire for God and stayed faithful to God and said, God, you've got everything under control. There's no need for me to worry about it, so I'm going to go on and do what you've told me to do. Now, I may not be preaching to anybody in church today, but I'm sure blessing myself because I want you to know something today. I don't care what the circumstances are. My message is not going to change. I don't care what the circumstances are. My ministry is not going to change because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. I refuse to doubt in the dark what God told me in the light. If you and I will say, Lord, I leave the circumstances to you, I'm going to be faithful to my calling, faithful to my testimony, 
and you take care of all the peripheral. God has a way of working it all out. Blessed be his name. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Three things I'll say and I'm done. The blind man could not see until Jesus ministered to him. And unless Jesus touches us, we will be blind because only he can give spiritual understanding. Number two, Jesus went to the blind man. The blind man did not seek Jesus. The scriptures tell us that he has come to seek and to save that which is lost. If you've never met Jesus, you're not seeking him. But if you've not met him, he's seeking you. Finally, the blind man could not find Jesus, but Jesus found him. The Lord knows right where you are. And you'll always know when he finds you because there will be something that will happen down inside. And you'll know, that's the Lord talking to me. You'll have a Christ living in you who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You don't reject my message if you turn from the truth. You reject my Jesus. And he will be your judge. Let's pray. Precious Lord, we're glad that we know that you're the way the truth and the life. Some of us face circumstances and situations that could overwhelm and frustrate us. Lord, in the midst of us, don't let us forget our ministry and don't let us forget our message. You take care of the circumstance. If there's one in this room that or across this audience that's spiritually blind, Lord, today you pass by. You're the light of the world. Help us to respond to you. If we'll hear your word and obey, we shall be saved and our eyes will be opened. We ask it in Jesus' name. Before we leave the sanctuary, I'm wondering how many are in church today and you'll say, Pastor Pino, I am so glad that one day Jesus passed my way. I heard his voice. I responded to him. And today I know him as my Savior. Would you put your hand up? You know that. He's the way, the truth, the life. Would you pray with me? How many are in this sanctuary today and you'll say, Pastor, I've known about Jesus. I've heard about him most all of my life. I've even heard his voice down inside of me. I have sensed that he was wanting me to respond to him. I never have. I sense his voice speaking to me again today. I'd like to lift my hand and just acknowledge that the Lord knows where I am and that he's faithful. Would you put your hand up and say, Pastor, you're talking to me. The Lord's speaking to me. Is there... One, any place over the audience. God bless you. Yes. Anybody else? That's beautiful. Let me just tell you this simply, and then we'll leave. The reason he's touched you is so he can open your eyes. We're going to talk more about this blind man, the Lord willing, in the days that are ahead of us. I'll just say this to you. They did everything in the world to try to make him doubt and to reject and to deny 
Jesus Christ. They did everything they could. And the blind man was very simple. He said, I, I don't know what you're all talking about. I can't get all involved in, in your fuss over the Sabbath and in all your doctrinal exercises. I, I don't know about all that. I just know one thing. I was blind, and now I can see, and I know who did it. <laughs> you see, that's, that's the reason it's important that you know Jesus. You may not know all the doctrine. You may not have all the answers, but you'll know when God touches you. And nobody will be able to take that away from you. Let's stand together, shall we?